Welcome to the Journeyman's Bits. The big difference with this one is it's the Avid pin down to super soft, heavy link, but it's fish bow rig style. But again, I think it just, if there's a slight bit of slack in the play, that'll take up that slack and keep the hook in place. And both the fish have been hooked really, really well. I mean, the 40 pounder, there's no way it was coming out. Well, that was an extract from Between the Lines part four, where I was at Blackthorn Fishery and I'd used the bow rig for the first time. Now the reason behind the thinking of using it was that uh, Blackthorn Fishery is barbless hooks, and I do have a bit of a problem with barbless hooks and worrying about them falling out. So I thought the bow rig might have that extra bit of tension that might hold the hook in place. As it turned out, it worked out quite successfully. But at the time, I kind of ducked the issue of showing you how to tie the bow rig and suggested you look at the Brenyard who actually invented it as far as I'm aware but I thought I'd uh, actually give it a go and uh, we'll see what happens. So here we go these are the components I use to tie the rig. I use a beak point hook if it's barbless rightly or wrongly the thinking being that if it's got a curve to go into the lip then it's got a curve to come out again as opposed to a straight point which can just pull in and pull out. If it's not barbless, then I'll use my favourite curve shank hook. And the hook link material is the 50 pound Avid pin down. And that's attached to a spinner swivel to hold the hook in place. And then to stop the hook coming off, I use a large kicker. There's some number three pole elastic and of course, a splicing needle. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is splice on the swivel. So I take the pin down, fold it over to form a loop. It'll give me the approximate starting point for my splice. Now I'm looking to uh, splice on about 35 millimeters. So insert the splicing needle carefully and then it really is a, just a slow job of slowly feeding the pin down onto the needle. So you've got approximately 35 millimetres, I don't measure it. It's not far off a full needle actually. Once I've got as much threaded on as I want to and then I put the needle through the side of the pin down, put the swivel onto the line, put the end onto the needle, hook it onto the crook, put the latch across and then just tease it back tightening it up onto the swivel then you can just trim off any excess and that's the swivel part done then on the other end I just put uh, a simple loop so the rig can go on and off a quick change swivel same as all my other rigs so again just form a loop to give me a starting point for the splice insert the needle turn it back round and then gently feed it back on again as I say looking for about 35 millimeters of splice as a minimum really when you're happy come through link the end of the pin down on the end of the needle put the gate across and pull it through now what I tend to do is to use my puller tool as a mandrel if you like to stop me closing it completely so I end up with make sure I've got a loop on the end of it 
and then just tighten it down and that's your loop right now starting from what would be the lead, lead end I've got a splice on the elastic so again slowly feed it through now this time I'm looking for concertina in on there about a, a needle and a half length so that gives me a fair amount of uh, elastic when it's all pulled under tension so this time we're putting the elastic on the end of the needle putting the gate across and then slowly easing it back through so you're pulling the elastic inside the braided hook link now give yourself plenty to work with there's no point in scrimping and all you need to do now is to uh, put an overhand loop on it and then just it's like a half hitch if you like and then just pull it down tight the elastic will pull down really tight and hold itself in place but I tend to do that two or three times just to lock it off don't be afraid to give it a good pull it's quite hard to break this stuff And just trim off yeah there's no need to trim it right down to size quite yet right now cut the elastic off again giving yourself plenty of spare now what we're going to do is concertina up the pin down as tight as it'll go really then again tie it off exactly as you did the first time with a overhand knot just hold it in place, do three again, and then trim it down till you're happy with it. And that's the uh, expanding bow part of the rig, really. Put the uh, kicker onto the hook. Then attach it to the swivel and then just push the kicker down over the top of that link to hold the hook in place put the anti-tangle sleeve over the loop end And then to finish off I put a bead onto the hook, tape it in first and push that down as far as the kicker. Then the uh, flexi ring swivel goes on fix the bait to and then another bead goes on this time with a tapered end to point in towards the point of the hook and that goes on so it's virtually opposite the barb then the last thing I do is to mold a bit of tungsten putty around the base of the ring swivel to balance the pop-up and that's the bow rig fished spinner rig style 
and that I always fish with a, a small bag and there's a bit of crumb boily and a few pellets of the live system and in the bag is some dissolving foam so when it's cast in it should raise the bait up obviously the bag melts and it should just drop down quite neatly so when they suck on it it should fly up into their mouth and with the added effect that the, the dissolving foam seems to hit the surface which gives you a target to bait to. Well there you have my version of the bow rig now that can be uh, fished a number of ways I use the uh, spinner or Ronnie rig on this occasion but it, you can fish it as a wafter rig or even a hinge stiff rig if you like. Thanks for watching Thanks for subscribing, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all again soon. Cheers for now. Oh, jeepers, that's a stupid idea, Jennings. Oh, shark. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs>